some Sunday basketball coming your way. For Boston Neighborhood Network, I'm Milton Posner, and this is the second Black Coaches Classic from Madison Park High School. We got four games coming your way today. The first one's gonna be O'Brien facing off against Cape Cod Academy. Both of these teams led by some versatile, dominant senior captains who are gonna lead the way for their teams in scoring. On the Cape Cod side, Jaden Greenleaf guy who's scoring about 25 points per game is knocking on the door of the all-time career Cape Cod scoring record and is going to be the focal point of the O'Brien defense, you can be sure. On the O'Brien side, it's Ibrahim Ba, a guy who's seen pretty much every defensive scheme that the Boston City League has seen fit to throw at him and a team whose head coach says their record, 3-12, and does not represent how well they can play. On the Cape Cod side, they're 13 and 12, undefeated in league play and ready to test their medal against a great city team. We'll be right back with the opening tip from Madison Park High School, so stick around. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. Welcome one and all to Madison Park High School for the second Black Coaches Classic. We got four games on tap for you today. The Cape Cod Academy Seahawks taking on the O'Brien Tigers in the opener. Lynn Tech facing Charleston in the second game. And then in the afternoon, New Mission Titans against the Tech Boston Bears. And closing it out, the Fenway Panthers up against the home court Madison Park Cardinals. For Boston Neighborhood Network, I'm Milton Posner. We got a little bit of a surprise here in the early going here. The starting lineups announced and Jaden Greenleaf, the Top scorer for the Cape Cod Academy Seahawks not announced in the starting lineup. Likely means he will not be available, but we will see how things develop. But if he is not available, it's a big loss to a Cape Cod team that's coming in 13-2 overall and a 3-12 Bryant team, albeit with a 3-12 record against some tougher city competition, may spot an opening here. Going to be David Maduki and Kelvin Danforth for the tip, and away we go. O'Brien takes it and immediately into the front court. Swing around. Elijah Ford, they're running a weave. It's poked loose. Cape Cod on the outlet. It's Trey Merritt out top, orchestrating the offense behind the back, swerves into the lane, stripped of the ball, recovers. Driving to the lane, there's the kick. Pivot, dump off, pass. And that one rolled over the end line. That's gonna be a turnover. Or no, they're saying off of O'Brien. So Cape Cod shooting the basket on your left here, wearing their road blues with a white trim. O'Brien with the home grays with a blue trim. Kick to the top, side step. Three-pointer fired. It was very close to being a violation, and it'll be going the other way. Ross Debovic of CCA. Going to be expected to take on some of the scoring load, you would presume, with Greenleaf sidelined. Not sure what the issue would be, but whatever it is with Greenleaf, it presumably arose in their Friday night game. Three-pointer, and no good for O'Brien on their first attempt at the game. That came from Caden McCusker. Sophomore guard. It's going to be four eight minute quarters for each game here with a running clock save for the last two minutes of the game. Halftime will be 10 minutes. Step back jumper curls off the rim there. That's Trey Merritt of Cease, or excuse me, it's Ibrahim Ba. Ba, the leading scorer for this O'Brien. See, oh, and there's a pick. Outlet up ahead to Ba. Benjamin Pierre, and there we go. The first points of the day for the captain, Benjamin Pierre, the 6'1", 5'6", senior guard, rather. This one's gonna stay here.
Cape Cod with a better overall record, but if they are missing their star, this is going to be a much different conversation than the one we'd anticipated. On the drive, up and in, Cape Cod on the board. That's Tamar Washington on the score. Para points apiece, two and a half minutes in. Cape Cod pushing the issue in transition. Ball flies up, spinning, flailing, loose ball in the paint. Kelvin Danforth falls on the ball, and they're going to jump it up. Ba goes to the floor there. It's Kelvin Danforth ultimately forcing the issue. Tenth grade captain out of Barnstable. Oh, and down. Three pointer. It's Trey Merritt. The first triple of the game for either team. Danforth rips down the rebound. That is what Kelvin Danforth will do for you, one of the rebounding leaders in the state of Massachusetts. Dump off pass. Stiff interior defense there, but a putback is good from CCA. It's Ross Dubovic. And a 7-2 lead for Cape Cod, blocked out of bounds. Dubovic recovering on the defensive end. Three minutes gone, and CCA has emerged on the front foot. Substitution for O'Brien. Mickey Paulos coming in. Ibrahim Ba will sit. And the trigger into Benjamin Pierre, the very vocal senior captain. Really the biggest leader for this team on the floor, in practice, in the locker room, according to the head coach, Drew Brock. Save attempt no good from Tamar Washington, and we'll stay here. And you can hear Drew Brock from the sideline saying, reverse the ball. This is a big part of their offense. They tend to run the flex. It's an offense that emphasizes a lot of side-to-side -side movement, cutting screens to get lateral movement across the paint and force the issue. Very good against man defenses. And for CCA, there's a defensive focus here. They like that Tamar Washington and Trey Merritt will set the tone with their foot speed. There's some confusion here among the officials as the, uh, the buzzer sounded during play. Drew Brock manning one sideline in the top left of your screen. Adam Rose on the CCA sideline. Brock's in his 12th season. And again, it seems like we're having clock issues. The shot clock not reset properly. And has expired now twice immediately after the inbounds. Seven two lead. CCA over O'Brien in the early going. It's been a wild turnover prone first few minutes as the teams find their bearings. Challenge here, we have some fans in attendance. And there is some chirping here, but you can hear exactly what these coaches are saying. Rose emphasizing that his players talk to each other on defense. Drew Brock on the O'Brien side emphasizing the extra pass here. They've only got two points in their first few trips. Inbounds, they get Pierre going. What a pass! Waved off. Oh, and they're going to call a walk on the catch there. So great pass there by Benjamin Pierre. But it will go for naught. Inbound here, full court press right away in the trap by O'Brien. CCA's through. Will they take advantage? Drive down, and they'll reset from the baseline. And take a look at Danforth. Expected to pick up a good bunch of the scoring, you would imagine, in Greenleaf's absence. Top rebounder in the state, superb rim protector as well. And that is really where Cape Cod hangs its hat, is on the defensive end. Our head coach Adam Rhodes saying they can guard at 90 feet consistently every day. 
It's a lot of full court press. It's a form of a havoc press. They'll trap when they want to. They'll play man to man. Effectively trying to shrink the clock to force turnovers and bad shots out of the opponent. You will see them press a lot. They adjust as the game goes, to be sure. But it's almost a default for them in some games. And driving to the basket there, drawing the foul, and he will shoot two. That's Thomas Brissett. Another player that Rose touted for his defensive acumen. I'm going to try to make something happen on the offensive side. Brissette's first one rims out. It's been slow going for O'Brien offensively over the first four minutes of the game. CCA forcing the ball inside and getting some of the shots they want here. And who wants the rebound more? It's Danforth, pass under to Bovic, and we're gonna keep it here. But Kelvin Danforth, the leading rebounder in the state, once again, making things happen on that end of the floor. Trey Merritt up top. Pressured by Elijah Ford of the Tigers. Seahawks reverse. There's the drive and the score. Tamar Washington with his second bucket of the quarter. 9-2 CCA. And Ibrahim Ba trying to marshal his troops here. One of the other captains, leading scorer, 20 points per game, fires to the corner. It's a McCusker three, no good. And Danforth rips down the board. <laughs> CCA not giving up much by way of rebounds on either end of the floor. They're earning themselves extra chances. They are denying O'Brien the same. And Kelvin Danforth more than anyone else the key. Official's going to confer now. Not sure if it's a clock issue. They're looking up toward the scoreboard. It's 9-2 with 3 minutes 22 remaining in the first quarter. Coaches to the center, please. And they're going to confer with the head coaches here, Drew Brock and Adam Rose, head to the table. <coughs> Benji Pierre set to check in for the Tigers at the next available moment. Try to listen in here and see what's going on. Multiple early stoppages here on what seem to be technicalities there. And they're waving the players over to the sideline. Appears as though there's a new piece of hardware being brought in, and maybe a scoreboard mechanism may have something to do with the shot clock issues that they were having earlier. Remember, there were two consecutive plays there where there was an inbound, and almost immediately the shot clock buzzer went off. It was not resetting properly. Not entirely sure if this is related to what's going on right now. But they are reconnecting a new piece of equipment over there on the scorer's table. The teams are in their huddles. Officials conferring near center court. A little bit later on, 
in the tradition of the Boston, tradition of the Black Coaches Classic, this is the second event. There will be a couple of honorees two years ago. And the first event was held, this was January 26th of 2020. There were two inductees to the Black Coaches Classic Legends Hall of Fame. This is a virtual billboard that celebrates retired local veteran coaches, administrators who show character, service, sportsmanship, who are leaders and role models in the community. The first was Charlie Titus, who was the former Chancellor of Athletics at UMass Boston, the face of that program for more than three decades. Not only did he help launch the program, he was inducted to multiple halls of fame, including the Little East Conference, New England Basketball, UMass Boston Athletics Hall of Fame. Also honored was former Boston School Committee member Alfreda Harris, used to coach women's basketball at Roxbury City College at UMass Boston at Emerson herself inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame and founder of the Shelburne Rec Center. The event as a whole, the aim is to promote athletes and coaches while honoring the local veteran coaches who do contribute to athletics and community in that way. The event itself grew out of a concern for underrepresentation of black people in coaching and administrative positions at the high school and college level, particularly in New England where the disparity more obvious than in most places, where the diversity of the playing ranks does not always make its way into positions of leadership on the sideline and in front offices, high school, college, etc. So they said, quote, on the heels of a pandemic and social unrest relating to issues impacting the black community, the BCC committee seeks to honor the next class of legends while they can still smell the roses and experience the appreciation of their peers and supporters. Thank you for your patience during this break in this first game of the second Black Coaches Classic featuring Cape Cod Academy Seahawks. Event itself, Tigers. sponsored by Elevate Boston, by Deliver Wash, by Brave Space Consulting, GetPsychedSports.org, a 501c3 nonprofit that you may have heard the PA announcer speaking about just a moment ago, Bankshop.store, and Plans of Flight. And thank you for joining us today. We seem just about ready to get things going. And now back to action. Where the current score is 8-5-9, 9 2 in favor of the Seahawks. Three minutes, 22 remaining in the first quarter. And O'Brien into the soft full court press. Breaking into the Seahawks. And Jamar Tamar Washington, who's got multiple buckets for the Seahawks in this game already. Pierre's jump in the passing lane. Chance for the Tigers to run. Kick pass there, Caden McCusker. Hand off Elijah Ford. Pierre, corner three. No good. Trey Merritt now. Oh, what a crossover into the lane. Tough shot. Stymied there by the Tigers, and the Seahawks will keep it. So we're finally back underway here. And O'Brien still. Part of it is the turnovers for them. Part of it is they've been getting open shots and just not quite knocking them down yet. It's Ross to Bovic. Pressured out 30 feet from the basket by Elijah Ford. Trey Merritt now. Oh, picked by Ba. Ba with one man to beat. Lays it in. O'Brien finally with their second field goal and the lead is down to five. Kick, Washington, three. No good. First points of the game for Ibrahim Ba. 20 point per game score and usually the focal point of the opposing team's defense. Floater can't be banked in there. Kick, Ba, catch and shoot three off the back of the rim. And Dubovic cradles the board. Chance for CCA to expand the lead and a turnover. Outlet pass, one man to beat. And it's good. David Maduki, his first bucket. And it's a one possession game again. O'Brien coming out of the stoppage faster than the Seahawks. And a foul on the entry pass. David Maduki tagged with a foul there, trying to hold off Danforth. And you get a feeling that's not gonna be the last time I'll have to say that sentence. Waldi Baez substituting in for Maduki here. There's really nobody 
on the O'Brien bench, it would seem, who can stack to Danforth physically. He steps out now. Oh, my goodness. And that's a three for Kelvin Danforth, and a big guy with that kind of range is not an easy cover for the Tigers. Ba, driving, tough floater, air ball. Rebound, Thomas Brissett, outlet pass. He's got Danforth, and Danforth misses the bunny here, and he's swarmed, he'll draw a foul. There's been no winning against Kelvin Danforth in the early going. Got his first three points. He's already, just by the eye test, got more rebounds than his opponent. And I mean the opposing team, not his matchup. Dubovic looking for Danforth and finds him. Driving now, Merritt, dump off pass, broken up. O'Brien with another chance to run. Ibrahim, ba, no good. And they'll go right back the other way. Trey Merritt, lefty layup, no good. Danforth cleans it up. Five points for Kelvin Danforth. And the Seahawk lead is back to eight. Trying to shove Ba toward the help, and it's a kick for a three. Bradley Wheeler. The release valve for Ibrahim Ba. And that's going to be a foul on Waldy Baez. He got Tamar Washington driving to the bucket. Foul number 24, Waldy Baez. Tamar Washington at the line, 32. 14 9 with 33.9 seconds to go in the first quarter. Clanks off the back. Seahawks have had their chances at the line in the first quarter to pad this lead. They have not been successful. That one goes down. Washington and Danforth now both with five. Calling out coverages here. Ba driving and held from behind by Dubovic. Ibrahim Ba gonna run the show here. By far the best scorer on this team. It's Coach Drew Brock says he feels like Ba's a top 10 player in the city. Crossover. Swing to Wheeler. Ba, crossover. Oh, finds his teammate. There we go for the O'Brien Tigers. And it's Waldy Baez getting on the board here as the quarter expires. Cape Cod 15, O'Brien 11. Five different scorers for the Tigers. On the CCA side, it's Danforth and Washington with five points apiece to lead the way in the early going. And in the absence of Jaden Greenleaf, their leading scorer, CCA has come out strong against the Tigers. It's kind of a tale of two teams in a lot of ways coming into this game. The Seahawks 13 and two. Although they play their competition being out, on the, being out on the Cape is perhaps not as stiff as that faced by O'Brien. O'Brien 3 and 12, but their head coach Drew Brock says he feels like they've played down for the most part. They've played well against good teams. They lost by one to Charlestown on Friday, even though they odds makers probably would have had them likely to be blown out. They lost close to several other good teams. And he feels like their record. 3 and 12 overall, 2 and 5 in league play doesn't come close to reflecting their actual skill level due to those gaps. Close losses telling the interesting story here. And we may see a zone defense here from the Tigers. And no, they're going to go to a Oh, close to the wing. Danforth, offensive rebound, no good. Another offensive rebound. Kelvin Danforth into the lane. 
Called him for double dribble and Danforth can't believe it. Did not appear to be a double dribble. The travel was very much on the table. And they're calling out UCLA. Let's see if we have a UCLA cut here. Run the players off a couple of pin downs here. Swing to the top. It's Waldy Baez. Paulos. Pass broken up there. Strong defense from Trey Merritt. Dubovic in transition. Changes gears to the rim. Danforth again. Kelvin Danforth. Seven points in the early going. No answers for the Seahawk powerhouse. Ball on the drive, and he'll draw a foul on the floor. <laughs> foul goes against Merritt. David Maduki will re-enter the game. He'll be matched up with Danforth. Waldy Baez after a brief spell. Wheeler, catch and shoot three off the inbounds, no good. Stabovic, Merritt, Tamar Washington, Kelvin Danforth, and Amir Polat out there for Adam Rose and the Seahawks of Cape Cod Academy. David Maduki hit with the foul there. And Kelvin Danforth will go to the line. Switches home the first. As much as it's difficult to say, and even tougher to do, if O'Brien does not find a way to contain Danforth, they are going to have major problems the rest of the way. He is gobbling up far too many rebounds. I'm only scoring points here, I'll be honest with you folks, but I believe Danforth's got about 10 rebounds here just going by the eye test. And we're only a couple minutes into the second quarter. Tamar Washington, full speed ahead, comes crashing into the defense. And too many steps underneath the basket from Polat. Caden McCusker enters the game. His brother Conan, Conan McCusker, had a stellar career at O'Brien as well. Caden's having a stellar season as well. There was initial worry from, he was worrying, his family was worrying what happens if he doesn't live up to his brother. But as you see right there, he absolutely is. Ball's gonna stay here. McCusker averaging 12 points, eight rebounds from the guard position. Head coach Drew Brock likes to go small sometimes. He wants to make up for the lack of height with bonus offense. And Caden McCusker, the sophomore guard, has been a big, big piece of that, standing 5'11", and averaging nearly a double-double. Now he's matched up with Merritt, who tries to slingshot a pass from the hip. Polat wasn't ready for it. There is that discussion there, especially at the high school level where how good a passer you are is tempered by how ready your teammates are to catch difficult passes. A little bit of blame to go around there. Ba wipes his shoes, gets ready, step back, loses the ball. Recovering nicely is Tamar Washington. Elijah Ford gonna take on Dubovic. Back to Ba. Jab step, step back. Oh, what a move, oh, what a shot! Ibrahim Ba with a splendid move. And this is a two point game, folks. 19 17. Dubovic snatches the rebound. Back up with it. Can't get the bounce. Danforth tips it off of O'Brien. Last touch, they rule by Howard Bro, number 32 in gray. Nineteen seventeen, Seahawks over the Tigers. Five minutes, 14 seconds to play in the second quarter. Washington looking for Danforth instead goes out to the perimeter. 
It's Trey Merritt guarded by Ba. Dubovic, long three-pointer. That one is good. Ross Dubovic, his first three-pointer of the game. Ba in transition, that one's staying here. Bryant looking for the trigger, running a couple players off staggered screens and comes into Caden McCusker. Bob with a crossover, Bob into the middle, stumbles and just finds his teammate Elijah Ford. Howard Bro for three, that one's short. Seahawks looking to run, it's two on two. Oh, what a bounce pass in traffic and Danforth finishes it off. Deft touch there from Trey Merritt on the assist. And McCusker with another three. Back and forth they go in the scoring that was absent for big stretches of the first quarter has shown up big time in the second for both these teams. 24-20 with four and a half minutes remaining in the period. Caden McCusker has launched himself into the team lead with six points. Ibrahim Ba after that spectacular move for three. He sits at five now. For CCA, it's Danforth, Danforth, and more Danforth. 11 points for the big man in the early going. Dubovic and Washington chipping in five apiece. For Ba, missed four games due to COVID-19. He's healthy now, but O'Brien lost all four games that he missed, including two in overtime that head coach Drew Brock feels they would have been much better positioned to win with him in the lineup. This is a guy who has faced some defensive coverages, including for the teams that are in this tournament. Tech Boston face guarded in the whole game. Tech Boston's gonna be playing new mission at 1.30 p.m. Charlestown, who you're gonna see in the next game, played him a box on one, which for those unfamiliar with the schemes, you match up four players in a zone, typically hugging the corners of the paint or approximating it. And then you have one player follow the other team's leading scorer around, in this case it was Ba, for the entire game, regardless of where he goes. It's a little bit similar to a matchup zone in that it combines zone and man defense principles. So Ba has seen just about every defense in the book this season. We have not seen CCA in their typical press. Howard Bro here, no good. And Dubovic on the boards. Howard Bro, you can see him fronting Danforth in the post, denying him the ball. Danforth to the opposite block, sets a screen. Tomorrow, Washington with 14 to shoot. Into the lane. And they're going to call a hit. It's going to go against Karan Blackley. It'll send Tamar, Tamar Washington to the line. And the physical defense that O'Brien has been forced to play, the fouls they've been coaxed to commit, are now causing a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Tamar Washington knocks down the first, earns the second. Seahawks have had a up and down day at the free throw line so far, but a chance to capitalize here as they're in the bonus for the next four minutes. Washington no good. Oh, and Howard Bro did a great job to seal Danforth, but lost the ball out of bounds after the rebound. Oh, Tamar Washington with a good save there in front of the O'Brien bench. Dubovic off a pin down into the corner. Trey Merritt thought about a three. Danforth at the elbow. Nice skip pass to Bovic. 15 to shoot at the elbow. Fakes, fires, hits. Ross to Bovic. 13 point, excuse me, seven points for number 13. 27-20 now with three and a half minutes to go in the half. Cape Cod with the lead and losing the ball out of bounds here. It'll stay here as Jared Rosario of O'Brien. These officials are inclined to call those strip plays, those tip plays, as the ball having gone off of whoever stripped it. It's a tough call to make in real time. It's always borderline. 
And that's going to be a travel right in front of the official. And that's the easiest call they're going to have all day. Caden McCusker taking too big a vacation there. Tamar Washington guarded by Benji Pierre, who's re-entered the game for O'Brien. And Drew Brock pointing that way, and he gets his way. We have not seen a ton of David Maduki. He's had a bit of a drought lately, but he is averaging a double-double on the season. Foul trouble, you'd imagine, has something to do with it. Trey Merritt picks it loose, and Ba runs it down on the backcourt. Tigers left to reset with 12 to shoot. Ba on the drive. Ba to the bucket for two. Ibrahim Ba. The lead is down to five. Fire, long three Merritt, no good, but Danforth tips the rebound to a streaking Dubovic, takes a hard fall, wanted the foul, but he's not gonna get one. O'Brien trying to take advantage. Ba, in and out move, kick to the top. McCusker fires for three, no good. Rebound to Tamar Washington and CCA. And a giveaway there wasn't on the same page with Merritt and the bounce pass trickles over the end line. A chance for O'Brien to make a push here. And they're calling out their UCLA play once again. Last time it was a couple of pin downs to get shooters free coming up toward the wing. Let's watch again. They go to Ba, the weak side screen didn't happen. McCusker now, two man game. Howard Bro for three, no good. He's missed a couple of those. And a foul committed there, and that's something O'Brien can't be doing while they're in the bonus. A foul on a non-competitive moment of the play. Thomas Brissett will have a chance to get on the board. And with a minute 55 to go, this is still the one and one. That one rims out, Benji Pierre chases down the rebound and O'Brien once again looking to push in transition. Pierre all the way to the rim, no one stopped the ball. Benji Pierre with his second field goal and Adam Rose calls for time. The lead is down to three, 27-24. And Ab Adam Rose having watched his team commit the cardinal scene, sin of ignoring the ball handler in transition, wants to talk to his squad. Remember, it's a squad playing without its leading score that is deferred instead to Kelvin Danforth, who has been terrorizing the Tiger defense on the interior. Get a look at Drew Brock there, 12th year head coach. In the huddle with his Tigers. Tamar Washington to bring it up here. Cape Cod Academy with about 100 seconds left to try to regain the lead that they had lost. Oh, into Danforth, stumbles, and that's gonna be a travel. The Tigers luck out, they swarmed him just in time. Oh, and Danforth looks like he's limping a little bit as he comes up court. Danforth is wearing a wrapping on his left knee. Not sure whether this is related to that, if he just bumped it. You can see how well he's moving here. 
giving a lot of slack to his offensive mark, letting him shoot. Now the drive, flailing layup, no good from Jared Rosario. Rosario, no good. In the Danforth, let's see how well he's doing. Jump ball. Gets out and he's getting teed up. Flung the ball back over the head of the official. And Kelvin Danforth frustrated right now. He's gonna go to the bench. I think Adam Rose wants a word with him. Oh, and he topples over a chair. He is frustrated. Two shots now for Caden McCusker. Knocks down the first. And that's a play if you're Danforth, you're, you're maybe frustrated, maybe in pain, didn't exactly see if he bumped his knee with someone or if something else happened. And frustrated on the tie up, he had the traveling violation a couple possessions ago. Just frustrated to the point he turned his back to the official and flung the ball to him sharply and over the official's head for an instant technical foul call. Caden McCusker knocks down both free throws, so it winds up being a two point mistake. And Danforth, you have to imagine, is going to sit for the rest of the half. CCA, oh, what a move into the paint there and a rip through. Oh, and Pierre tied him up. Benji Pierre. Aggressive defense and targeting the ball well. It's Thomas Brissett on the drive. So CCA will keep it. But Pierre earns his team the possession arrow. 40 seconds remaining in the half. Washington short on the layup. We're going the other way. And a chance for O'Brien to take its first lead of the game. Remember, CCA hopped out to a 9-2 run in the early going. Pierre into the front court. Not much of a chance to go two for one here. Ba on the drive, Ba into the lane, Ba to the bucket, no good. Polat the rebound. And Dubovic with the shot clock off. Flings it wide. Bounce pass at the knees of Brissett. He just recovers. And they'll call a foul on, let's see here, Mikey Santos. It should be shots. Initial confusion, they were gonna inbound the ball from the baseline, but it is shots here. It should be one and one. And it'll be one and one for Thomas Brissett, who missed the front end of a one and one earlier. Short. Rebound, Polot. He is fouled. Foul is going to go against Benji Pierre. Not been keeping track of fouls, but there's undoubtedly some foul trouble here for the O'Brien Tigers. That's their 10th team foul of the half. Number five is disqualification. Waldi Baez is going to check in here. Off is Polat. They're in the double bonus now. Knocks it down here, two point lead. Chance for O'Brien to tie or take the lead going into the half. Ibrahim Ba guarded by Dubovic. Crossover, step back, fires a three, that's short. Rebound, it's good! The collection and the putback from Mikey Santos. And we are even at 28 going into the intermission. It's going to be a 10 minute break here. We are going to take a quick break and be right back with the second half from Madison Park High School. You're watching the Black Coaches Classic brought to you by Elevate Boston. Deliver Wash. Brave Space Consulting. GetSightSports.org. Bankshop.score. And Plans of Flight. Stick around with us. 
When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where did Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. And we are back from Madison Park High School. It's a tie game here, 28-28, between Cape Cod Academy and O'Brien High School. Garland Shostak, Jim Dowdy, Brad Lewis, our crew here today. I'm Milton Posner. Thank you so very much for tuning in. We're going to have Seth Orensky here later to call the last couple of games. But for now, it's the Tigers and the Seahawks, and the Tigers making a run in that second quarter. Ibrahim Ba knocks down the jumper, and for the first time in the game, the Tigers have the lead. Outlet pass to Bovic. Jumper in the lane, no good. Rebound, oh, and a nice interior pass there to Danforth, but he can't finish. Danforth back in the game. He was sat possibly as punishment for the last minute of the half there after drawing a technical foul for an Let's say an irritable backwards flip of the ball to the official. He is unquestionably the most dominant player in this game, although O'Brien was able to frustrate him down the stretch of the first half to make his life difficult to swarm him, make him catch the ball where he didn't want to, and occasionally deny him the ball altogether. Offensive rebound, Tigers up and in. Strong move there. David Maduki averaging a double-double and telling Kelvin Danforth, I can do anything you can do. They poke it loose. Four on three for the Tigers. Bounce pass. Lane wasn't there. Behind the back here, Dubovic tripped up as he came across the lane, and that'll be a foul on the Tigers. First of the half. I mean, want to watch the Tigers' foul numbers. This was a big thing in the first half here. David Maduki had some of his minutes shaved off because of foul trouble, and that's another one on Maduki. He will sit after just a minute and change of play time. Howard Bro is going to come back in and be matched up with Danforth, and now what will the Seahawks do? Danforth had Bro's number in the opening 16 minutes. Go for pick and roll. Instead, they go to the corner. Amir Palat. Make that brissette, and he knocks it down. We're even at 30. Outlet pass. Ba. Baseline. McCusker, three. Good! Caden McCusker, third three-pointer of the game. He and Danforth, both with 11 to lead all scorers. Cusker already a point shy of his season average. Brissett spins into the lane and draws a very generous foul there as Drew Brock's telling his guys, you've got to keep your hands up. They had the, their position. They were set. But can't keep the hand out of the cookie jar, and that's going to be a foul on the floor. Another chance for CCA. Danforth guarded by Pierre. He's got about a foot of height on him. Now against the more appropriately sized Howard Bro, an air ball hook shot, and Dubovic cleans it up. Ross Dubovic has been absolutely everywhere. He's got seven points, litany of rebounds, and has shown defensively in spots as well for the Seahawks. And he draws a foul on Howard Bro here, and again, Drew Brock telling his guys, verticality. Dubovic knocks down the first. No good on the second. Ibrahim Ba. The run horns up top. He goes left. And a foul assessed there to Brissett.
Poked away there, Tamar Washington. Contorting his body and scoring. Tamar Washington's got eight. The freshman getting things done. There's the kick, bro, foul line, no good. Debo and Pierre takes the rebound away. Up and in, plus a foul. Benji Pierre, the little engine that could, and a chance for three. Just snuck his way in the back door and found the rebound. Can't hit the free throw, Dan Forth collects the rebound. Dubovic, Washington, Brissett, Dan Forth, and Trey Merritt out there for Adam Rose and the Seahawks. Washington, kick, Merritt. Opts for Brissett, corner three, no good, and Pierre with another rebound. Pierre in transition, bounce pass to Ba. They didn't have the numbers though. Bro, handoff, kick, Pierre, driving baseline, that's off the foot of Tamar Washington. This is a different O'Brien team than the one we saw in the first quarter. Much more assertive defensively, and they are not letting Kelvin Danforth push them around underneath the basket. Danforth has not scored in some time. After a white-hot start, not tracking rebounds here over where I'm perched, but have to imagine he's got a double-double already. Averaging more than 13 rebounds a game to lead all Massachusetts players. Drive by Merritt, scoop layup, good. Trey Merritt gets another bucket. Oh, and a carrying violation as they come over mid-court. That's a little bit of a rarity. And an unforced error there for the Tigers. Remember, they lead it 37-35 with four minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. Next game on tap is gonna be the Lynn Tech Tigers and the Charleston Townies. Washington kick, Brissett, no good. Tip rebound, Bradley Wheeler chases it down. Ibrahim Ba turns on the afterburners and has to chase down the ball after it's poked loose. Elijah Ford. Pierre on the handoff, Ba, double teamed. Oh, they brought Danforth out of the middle and what a play by Washington. Oh, and the whistle, the foul, a late whistle there. Tamar Washington on a beautifully timed help. Ripped it away from Howard Bro, and they'll call him for the foul. Number 37, 35, three minutes, 31 seconds remaining in the third. Oh, and that, did they just tee up Danforth? They may have given him a warning here. They called out his number, and Danforth can't believe it. It's not a technical foul, there are no shots. This may be some kind of warning. Remember, they teed him up for maybe an angry flip it pass back to the ref. Ibrahim Ba to try to trigger for the third time. Twenty-five seconds on the shot clock. He gets it into Pierre just barely. Pierre on the drive, flip shot, no good. Wheeler catches the air ball and the pass picked off. It'll be going the other way. Hey, 
Ba, step back, long two, no good. Loose ball, Bro collects, scores! Howard Bro flips it in and the foul. And O'Brien starting to worry Adam Rose here. O'Brien's not going to try to rebound this one. Bro swishes home the free throw. 40 to 35. O'Brien leading the quarter 12 points to 7. And with Danforth stymied, frustrated, not playing like he was in the first, another source of offense badly needed for the Seahawks, and Brissett can't hit. Dubovic with a rebound. Dubovic lays it in. Ross Dubovic, the second Seahawk in double figures. Only such player on the O'Brien side is Caden McCusker, who's on the bench right now. Elijah Ford getting shifty with it. Howard Bro for three. That one's well off to the left. And it's going to stay here. Karin Blackley. Caden McCusker in for the Tigers. Caden McCusker will re enter. See if he can give O'Brien that added offensive spark. Here's Pierre. Miscommunication on the screen with Bro, and now they'll reset. Floater, Ford, no good. Dubovic with another rebound. He has been fantastic on the boards. Trey Merritt poked loose, recovers. Scoop layup, no good. Trickles off the rim and into the hands of the O'Brien Tigers. McCusker in transition. McCusker to the banker. 13 points for Caden McCusker, the sophomore. And O'Brien with a five point lead. Step back three. Washington didn't have his footing. Momentum has swung firmly in favor of the gray and blue. Three pointer forward air ball. Looking to run are the Seahawks. Bro trying to chase down, and that's body contact on Washington. Good sport helps him up, and that's going to be a pair of free throws for Tamar. 42 37, minute 30 to go. Washington knocks down the first. Rose seemingly cautioning his team against overhelping here. Only one person needs the help or else you're hurting yourself elsewhere. Howard Bro will go to the bench. Waldy Baez back on. And a key for CCA appears to be when can they get Danforth going like he was before? Hard to say how much is the frustration, how much of it is the limping that we saw earlier. But as you can see there on the layup from Ba, Danforth not protecting the rim in the way we saw him do in the first period. He has had some trouble. Added defensive pressure will do that to you. Cross court pass to Bovic. Fires a three. Air ball. Ibrahim Ba in double figures now after that last bucket. McCusker. Most of the players here have got masks on. McCusker's the only one who's wearing it over his nose and mouth during play. Oh, and that's a hard hit there, a hard fall taken. Appears to be Ibrahim Ba. See if they need to get him some attention. He is still down underneath the basket. He may have just gotten the wind knocked out. And the officials are going to help him up. Appears to be OK. You just hope he didn't hit his head on the hardwood. So it's going to be an inbound for O'Brien here. 44-39 their lead with 42 seconds remaining in the third. McCusker, pass almost picked off, but it gets to Bob. Back to McCusker in the corner. Bounce pass. Waldy Baez 
Danforth may have gotten a piece of that. Either way, it's off the underside of the rim. Here come the Seahawks. Brissett, crossover, kick. Trey Merritt for three, no good. Danforth with an offensive rebound. Kick to Brissett. And they draw the foul. And that's the Kelvin Danforth we saw in the early going. Ripping down the offensive board and making things happen for his Seahawks. This is a team playing some tougher city competition and they're doing it without Jaden Greenleaf, their leading scorer, not in the lineup today. Brissett knocks down the first. Greenleaf is less than 100 points shy of the all-time Cape Cod scoring record. He's got the boys' record. The girls' record and the overall record at that, <laughs> held by Kendall Currents, currently a senior star playing the point guard position at Northeastern University, go Huskies. You can't tell my bias. Still goes to Cape Cod to work out sometimes, and Greenleaf has certainly followed in her footsteps as a terrific player out on the Cape. Out of the lineup today against the city competition, and the city competition has roared back after a slow start. Bradley Wheeler, six seconds to shoot. Floater from deep, no good. The clock's gonna expire here without a shot from the Seahawks. And O'Brien takes control here and ekes out a three-point lead going into the fourth quarter. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. When they learn something new and you can just see in their faces, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are my favorite. Three-point game with eight minutes to play. Seahawks offense not functioning the, at the clip it was in the early going, say the first eight, ten minutes of the game when they were decidedly in control. Here comes the trap. McCusker tried to hurdle the defender, it seems. Brissett fires for three. Danforth with a rebound, and he draws the foul. The three-point looks have been there. They have been quality looks but they have not fallen for the Seahawks just as a general rule. A couple of substitutions here as Benjamin Pierre looks like he's hobbling a little bit. We'll go to the bench. Ibrahim Ba will come back in. Oh, and an unforced giveaway there as Elijah Ford, light pressure was all it took, and Danforth fumbles it out of bounds. Again, the UCLA play. Ba finds McCusker. Swing, corner, Ford, three, no good. Offensive rebound. Karan Blackley earns another chance. Elijah Ford with another chance. And a travel there. Third time, not the charm for the Tigers. Drew Brock trying to marshal his Tigers 3-12 record to a win over a 13-win squad. There's a tie up there. We're going the other way. Tigers possession. Caden McCusker to inbound the ball. Elijah Four, they're going to swing it to Blackley in the corner. Ba on the drive. Ba with the kick. McCusker with a three, well long. 
Danforth collects the rebound off the floor. Around the hard screen, Washington into the middle. Dubovic, floater with an off hand there, and he gets it close enough, but he was fouled on the play, and he'll go back to the charity stripe. Ross Dubovic. And he knocks down the first. First points of the fourth quarter for either team as Benji Pierre re-enters the game for Ferran Blackley. Dubovic's got 11. Make it 12. Timeout called by Drew Brock on the Tiger sideline here. So he's not liking what he's seeing from his offense. They have not been generating good chances so far in the fourth quarter. The last time this event was held, this was January 26, 2020. In addition to the inductees to the BCC Legends Hall of Fame that we mentioned earlier, there's a bit of a somber note cast on the proceedings because this was the day that for a lot of lifelong basketball fans, the unthinkable happened. This was the day that Kobe Bryant and eight others, including his middle daughter Gianna, were lost in a helicopter accident in Calabasas, California. The news was broken at the first Black Coaches Classic to about a thousand attendees. Some of the players, the staff, the coaches interviewed by My Fox Boston. And uh, the thing that stood out was one player saying, I, I wanted him to become one of the greats, to, to grow old, to mentor young basketball players. As, as fans of Kobe Bryant know, he already was. He dedicated himself to elevating the women's game of seeing it through his daughters and helping to elevate the NBA, the college game at all levels. And so as much of a somber note as it was, I mean, these are kids competing in Boston here, and this was a guy playing for the uh, the rival pro team. I mean, you could, you could tell just watching these guys in these interviews just how much it hit everybody. It's a dark day for the sport. The Black Coaches Classic persists here, the things it represents still very much a part of us. And Bradley Wheeler firing for three now. McCusker fighting for the rebound, loose ball. dubovic has got it on the sideline, behind the back. And loses the dribble in transition. Just shy of a tremendous move, but it was not to be for Dubovic. His Seahawks will retain possession. In the Danforth, good position. He's double teamed, but he's got a bucket. Kelvin Danforth with his first basket in a good long while. And the Seahawks are back in front, 45-44, with under six minutes to go. Floater, Ford, no good. Dubovic with another rebound. Trey Merritt, top step. Tied up. Strong defense there from Ba. Substitution here, Benji Pierre re-enters. Elijah Ford subs off. Cape Cod will Cape Cod will take it. Looking for Danforth here. Benji Pierre is guarding him, but Danforth's a foot taller. Fires long on the jumper. And O'Brien collects. Ba pushing in transition. Ba, free throw line jumper. Gets the roll. Ibrahim Ba, 13 points to lead. Or rather with McCusker to co-lead his Tigers. Oh, great pressure at the point of attack by Pierre. Burns valuable seconds off the shot clock. And an errant pass out of bounds. Oh, Pierre is fired up. Drew Brock saying before the game, this is what Pierre gives you. Sat out a couple games to rest his foot. He's playing through it now. But it's a very different team when he sits out. He is the engine who gets them going. 
on Friday night's game as Wheeler fires and knocks down a three. On Friday night's game, Benji Pierre had eight points and eight steals. You heard right, eight steals in one game. That was a losing effort for the Tigers. And Brock saying he liked their intensity. They played at a 10 or 12 win level. But like the loss was not indicative of the effort that they put in. But that three-pointer from Wheeler putting them back up by four. It's 49-45, 4 to go. Wheeler kick, Bob. Nine seconds to shoot. Step back three, no good. Pierre chasing down the rebound, and he saves it off of Brissette. Benji Pierre. Tiger's ball. With an unlimited stash of hustle. He's not a big guy, as you can see. Five foot six, and that's all. But he plays like he's seven foot six. Ba. Foul line jumper again with a friendly bounce. And this one's starting to get into dangerous territory here for Adam Rose and his Seahawks. They're down six inside of four minutes to go. Dubovic, drive, gets the roll. Friendly bounces for both teams here, and Drew Brock calls the timeout. Gonna take a moment here and say a thank you to our crew here while we got a timeout. We got Jim Dowdy, Arlen Shostak, Brad Lewis all swapping roles, engineering, camera work, setting up, tearing down, bringing you this game. It's a lot of equipment that goes into broadcasts like this. Up next, Lynn Tech versus Charlestown. A lot of setup, a lot of details, a lot of finicky stuff atop the creaky bleachers. I'm glad I'm doing this game with them. This is Milton Posner bringing you this one part of the Boston Neighborhood Network programming. And it's been a good game thus far. Assembled fans, We've got a little more than 100 people here in the building in front of us in the bleachers. Spread out across the gym. It's a Madison Park High School. It's a court named after Dennis Wilson, who's gonna be honored here later today. He and his late brother, Harry, are going to be this year's Hall of Fame inductees. Co-founded the Roxbury Raiders Pop Warner football and cheerleading program more than 45 years ago. They're also responsible for one of the most popular local destinations for pro-am basketball players in its time. That'd be the Roxbury Basketball Association. In Dennis's case taught, in Dennis's case, taught history, coached basketball in the Boston public schools system for more than 30 years. Division I Coach of the Year three times, more than 400 wins. And you can see here in the bottom right of your screen, the court named for him. For a tournament built on honoring these community leaders, a fitting location to hold this one. The first one at UMass Boston, where both honorees had worked. For this one, Dennis Wilson's name adorns the court that this very close, very competitive basketball game has been played on. 51-47. O'Brien over Cape Cod at the moment. Three minutes, 30 to go. Pierre passes picked. Trey Merritt just gets it in over the hand of Ba. Trey Merritt with his sixth and seventh points. And another steal from Merritt. He's fouled on the transition breakout. Foul assessed to Ba. And it's gonna be a pair of free throws for Trey Merritt. He can tie the game with a couple of makes. Knocks down the first. Seven.
Second is good. Tie game at 51. Both teams have got a couple of possessions left to make their mark in this one. Ba, crossover, step back, pull up, jumper, short. Snags his own rebound. Pulls up again, short again. Pierre fighting Danforth for the rebound, gets it to Ba, the kick, McCusker for three. Air ball long, fourth chance as Pierre with the rebound. Ba for three. And there's only so much you can play with fire before that's gonna happen. Ibrahim Ba with 18 points to lead all scorers. Seahawks into the set. Poked loose. Nearly traveled with it, but his teammate Washington did. A chance for the Tigers to make it a two possession game. McCusker up top. Hand off back to him. They'll run a weave on the sideline, trap from CCA. McCusker for three, no good. And he has gone cold after a blazing hot start. Inside of two minutes. Merritt thought about a three, pulls back. Brissett, he's got Dubovic. Long three-pointer, that's good! Ross Dubovic ties the game inside of two minutes. Timeout O'Brien. Ross Dubovic, 17 points to lead his Seahawks. And in crunch time, the guards stepping up. 54, 54, minute 47 to play. We're seeing right behind the O'Brien bench there, one of the next teams filtering in. It's gonna be three more games here today. The next one, Lynn Tech and Charlestown. New Mission and Tech Boston after them. And then a recognition ceremony for the honorees, Dennis and Harry Wilson. And then the Fenway Panthers facing off against the Madison Park Cardinals to close out the day. Madison Park getting to play on their home court. O'Brien, of course, right next door. On the court for O'Brien, Elijah Ford to trigger. Benji Pierre to bring the ball up. Caden McCusker, Ibrahim, Ibrahim Ba, and David Maduki in the front court. For the Seahawks, it's Brissett, Dubovic, Merritt, Washington, and Danforth. And that one's poked loose, that's off Ba. Turnover for the Tigers. They cough up the ball coming out of their timeout. And a big, big chance for the Seahawks here. Looking for their first lead of the period. Merritt, step back. Got it! Trey Merritt gives Cape Cod the lead. And he has come on strong in the fourth quarter. Drew Brock on his knees barking instructions at the team. Ba wide open on the back cut and we are even again. Top scorer in the game, top scorer on his team and he was left all alone on the back side. Inside of a minute now, 56 all. Merritt circling, stumbles, coughs up the ball. Ba with one man to beat. No good. Danforth the outlet, 40 seconds to go. Merritt with McCusker on him, no good. Dubovic scores! Ross Dubovic, 19 points, and none bigger than those. 
32.8 seconds to go. Unbelievable stuff. As many lead changes as you could want. Fifty-eight, fifty-six now. And for O'Brien, a chance to tie with a two or take the lead with a three. Only a three second difference between the shot clock and game clock. There is no two for one here. And with the way the clock functions in high school games, they are incentivized very much to play for the last shot. Maybe leave just enough time for Danforth or Dubovic to tip the ball in. Here they come out of the huddle. Same lineups as the last possession. Benji Pierre to bring the ball up. Bond and McCusker space to the corners. Here we go. Benji Pierre traverses the timeline. Backcourt. Bah! Oh, what a pass! This game is tied! This game is tied! David Maduki on the layup. 15 seconds to go. And Rose screaming for the timeout and he gets it. Why play for the last shot when you can get a back cut that good? Ball on the back cut, handoff to Maduki. And we are even at 58. And now a chance for Adam Rose to draw up his play. Who do you go to? Dubovic has been the biggest contributor offensively, particularly in the second half. He's got 19 points on the day. But it's been Trey Merritt in the third quarter, excuse me, in the fourth quarter, who has seized the mantle and kept the Seahawks level. Same players for O'Brien, same players for Cape Cod Academy. Trey Merritt to trigger. Dubovic on the far wing, Danforth's in the post. Inbound pass appears intended for Tamar Washington, and it is. 10 seconds to play, fighting Pierre in the backcourt, over the timeline. Merritt, the drive, handoff, the pass is broken up! Three seconds to play, Pierre coast to coast! No good! Overtime! And Pierre is down underneath the basket. Oh no. Benji Pierre, one of the captains and the undisputed vocal leader for this Tiger team in some serious pain right here. Trying to get up of his own volition, he's hobbling. Skipping it off. And lets out a yelp. He may not be good to go anymore. Without his willpower, without his energy, his hustle, his fighting spirit, the Tigers lose this game in regulation, no question. And now they may have to find a way to win it in overtime without him. 58-58 after 32 minutes of play. Being a parent, especially for the first time, with that comes a lot of self-doubt. As a dad, I just try to lead by example. When you're trying to be the best person that you can be, your kids see that and then they emulate that. Danforth, Debovic, Brissett, Washington, and Merritt. 
for the Seahawks. Maduki, Ba, McCusker, Ford, and Benji Pierre right there. You can see official having a chat with him. Dubovic coming over to say hello. He is going to try to go here. We'll see how well he's moving. You never question the heart and determination of a player like that. Ba right off the inbounds. That one's on the end line. It'll stay here. It's a four minute overtime here. Eight minute quarters means four minute overtime. Both of these teams have fought tough in the fourth quarter. McCusker drifting three. Got it! Nothing but the bottom for Caden McCusker. 16 on the day. Benji Pierre picks up the foul. It'll be an inbound from the side. Oh no, it won't. They're shooting here. This is a moment where I'll fest to not being completely confident about the overtime foul rules. And the reason I'm confident fessing to that is because clearly the score wasn't either. Whoever's operating the scoreboard had reset the fouls coming into the overtime period and now resets them to where they were at the end of the fourth. So bonus conditions continue, apparently. Both teams in the one and one bonus. And the front end of the one and one goes awry for the Seahawks. 61-58, O'Brien leads it. Ba on the crossover, Ba to the rim and draws two. Ibrahim Ba, it's just so hard to keep him in front of you. Speed and quickness in spades to be sure, and the handle to bring it with him. Perky, jerky, shifty, and smooth all at the same time. He'll step to the line for two, knocks down the first. 21 points for Ibrahim Ba. Twenty-two now. It's a five-point lead for O'Brien. Three minutes twenty-two remaining in the extra in the extra frame. Officials trying to straighten something out at the scorer's table. They feel like they've got it. Two shots for Ibrahim Ba. And the scorer announcing the two shots for Ibrahim Ba after they go in, which, yeah, fair enough. Tamar Washington on the drive now in the mid-range. Pops out, shifty move, kick, corner, good vision. Oh, and Dubovic misses the open three. They've got it back. Kelvin Danforth on the assist from Dubovic. He's got 15. And the lead's back down to three. And that's what something the Seahawks have done all game. The offensive rebounding has been there even when the three-point shooting, even on the open looks, has not been. Ba around Dubovic. Pull up jumper. Tough shot for Ba. Torching the defense in the mid-range time and time again. And the lead is back to five with two and a half minutes to go. Oh, and an irate David Maduki can't believe he got whistled for the reach in foul there. And Kelvin Danforth will go to the line for one and one, I believe. Kelvin Danforth at the line. And no, they're saying two shots. Danforth got a very smooth stroke there. A 6'6 guy at this level, you don't take that as given. But he has done very well from the charity stripe. Danforth rattles out the second. On Brissett, the reward he gets for fighting for it is having McCusker throw the ball off his abdomen. 65, 61, two and a half minutes to go. O'Brien still with a two possession lead. Four, four, four. 
crossover. Ba, handoff to Maduki. Back to Ba. Is he going to pull? He's going to drive and kick. Ford for three. Good. First bucket of the game for Elijah Ford, and it could not have come at a better time. Dubovic drives to the bucket. Easy two for him. He's got 21. Five point game now. O'Brien looking to make it a three possession game. Oh, and ripped clean. Washington takes it away from Ford. Double figures for Washington, and the lead is down to three. And Baas fouled on the sideline. This is going to be a couple of free throws for Ibrahim Ba. Pair of free throws for Ba here. And no, they go to one and one. It's a miscommunication between the scorer and the refs, but it's a one and one, and he misses the front end. Seahawks with a chance to tie with a three. Instead, it's Dubovic to the rim. Gets his own rebound. And it's taken away by O'Brien. Benji Pierre took that fall at the end of regulation. And a timeout called on the drive here. Drew Brock taking it. Pierre still playing in spite of that hard fall he took at the end of regulation on that. Last ditch, Tyus Edney style attempt to tie the game with a layup. Timeout on the floor, one way left in the game in overtime. Concessions, concessions, concessions. I want to warn the right knee. Something to drink. There is concessions out in the hallway in the main entrance. Up next after this overtime is Lintech versus 68-65, O'Brien leading Cape Cod Academy at the moment. Opening game of the Black Coaches Classic. It's the second event by that name. The planning committee here of Kari Rulak, Eggy McRae, Harold Miller, Malcolm Smith, Bruce De Silva, who put the event together aiming to promote athletes and coaches while honoring local veteran coaches, administrators who have contributed to athletics in the community at the high school and collegiate levels. Initial event at UMass Boston two years ago. The event last year derailed due to the pandemic. And this year coming back, they intend for it to continue as an annual event in the future. And if this is the kind of competition you can expect from it, then it may become musty television. Oh, and that's a backcourt violation. Wrong place to catch the ball. And Benji Pierre whistled for it. Seahawks down three with the ball. Inside of a minute to go in overtime. Brissett on the drive. No good. Rebound. Danforth trickles off. And a foul on the Seahawks. Benji Pierre. Unbelievable hustle. And they are one and one. And, the bonus right and he will shoot one and one. Benjamin Pierre going to the line. A chance to make it a two possession game. And for Pierre, who took that fall, who has been all over the court. It's been the spitting image of the little dog who challenges the big dog and comes out victorious. Knocks down the first. Seven points for him. Takes his time. Oh yeah. Five point lead for the Tigers. Trey Merritt into the front court. Foul line jumper, pull up good. 
A quick hit for Merritt and the Seahawks. And Cape Cod calls for time. They need a stop. They need a three. Forty-four point seven seconds to go here. Second Black Coaches Classic is brought to you by Elevate Boston by Deliver Wash by Brave Space Consulting Get Psyched Sports Bankshop.store and by Plans of Flight For our crew, Arlen Shostak, Jim Dowdy, Brad Lewis, I'm Milton Posner bringing you this one. We're going to say hi to Seth Orensky for the last two games of the day later on. And the first game has been more than anyone involved thought they would get. An extra four minutes of play here, and still we're going down to the wire. CCA going into that full court press we usually see from them, but have not seen much today. In the Pierre. Press is broken, or is it? There's a travel! They forced the turnover! Oh, what a critical misstep for Elijah Ford and O'Brien. Thirty-five seconds to go, seven second difference shot in game clock. Dubovic, Washington, they go into Danforth. Layup is good. One point game. Timeout called by the Tigers. Drew Brock wants to talk things over. 23.2 seconds to go. O'Brien with a one point lead and the ball. The shot clock is off. Teams should be shooting two free throws as opposed to the one and one going forward. Seventy to sixty-nine. O'Brien with a one-point lead and the ball. Twenty-three point two seconds to go. Shot clock turned off. McCusker to trigger. Bounce pass gets it in. Elijah Ford. Back to McCusker. They break through and throws on the brakes. Back to Pierre. Now to the leading scorer Ibrahim Ba, and that's who they foul. Ba goes to the line. Brissett with a foul. Two shots for Ba. Please hold the ball. Hold the ball, gentlemen, back court. We got a couple of teams. If you can hear the PA guy, he's telling the guys to hold the ball. They're on the practice court behind. And Ba with a critical miss on the first free throw. Interesting decision by O'Brien here not to contest the rebound. They're going to cover Danforth in the backcourt. That one is up and good for Ibrahim Ba. Eight seconds to go. Two-point lead. Tamar Washington. They find Brissett. Three seconds to shoot. Merritt, they've got to get a shot off. Are they? Danforth at the buzzer. No good. O'Brien survives and knocks off the 13-win Seahawks. 
71-69 the final. And Ibrahim Ba, 25 points to lead the way. An outstanding effort. And what a finish. Please make sure to stay off the playing floor at all times. See you for the next game. Lintek, Charlestown, up next. 25 points for Ba. Dubovic, 21 to lead his team in defeat. Kelvin Danforth, 18, a fast start, struggled later on as O'Brien figured out how to scheme for him. David Maduki, six points off the bench. Gonna say a quick thank you to our crew and to our sponsors for the crew, Jim Dowdy, Arlen Shostak, Brad Lewis, for their camera work, the engineering, the setup, all they do to bring you this game, to the sponsors to elevate Boston, to deliver wash, Brave Space Consulting, Get Psyched Sports, Bankshop.store, and Plans of Flight. We'll be right back. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! You may not be able to plan ahead for a ghost encounter. Under the dining table now! But you can plan ahead for natural disasters. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Maybe it's the apocalypse. Know your evacuation routes and decide on a safe emergency meeting location. Here? I know. What a big to Orlando. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. So pass the Proton Pack to the next generation and visit ready.gov slash plan to get started. Well, that's one heck of a pallet setter right there. O'Brien holding tough and winning 71-69 over Cape Cod Academy in overtime. Ibrahim Ba, 25 points to lead his Tigers. You know, we were told about what this kid could do. Is coach Drew Brock saying before the game that he thinks Ba is a top 10 player in the city right now. After seeing it, he may have been selling him short a little bit. Terrific moves, great jump shooting, and good leadership. Same could be said on the leadership side from Benji Pierre, persisting through a hard fall to lead his team in the fourth quarter in overtime to overcome a 13-win Seahawk Academy team. Granted, that was missing its best player in Jaden Greenleaf, but one that got great performances from Kelvin Danforth in the first half and Ross Dubovic in the second half. For Bradley Lewis, Arlen Shostak, Jim Doughty, and for all of our sponsors, thank you so very much for listening. I'm Milton Posner. We're going to have some more games coming up later, but for this one, so long.